people make a lot of mistakes when buying property in this video I'm going to share with you the five common mistakes people make so you can avoid them and you can have a prosperous property future property is one of the best businesses I've ever come across you can do really well create some really nice homes for lots of people to enjoy with their families but it's also where people lose a lot of money very very quickly and my aim and ambition is to help you do well and avoid all the mistakes so that you get to your destination whatever that may be quicker than you would do ordinarily so let me share with you five mistakes I think people make when buying property especially in their early days so the first one is that new buyers or people new to the property market buy a property because they think it's cheap and they don't really know uh, if, if it is cheap and they haven't done their research uh, because maybe a property has been on sale for quite a while and it's not selling and you make an offer lower than uh, what you might ordinarily make and you think you're getting a good deal well the first thing is if the property has been on for a while there's a reason it isn't selling because most investors out there are pretty savvy they know what they're doing and if people aren't buying it there must be some problem or some issue that you haven't picked up because you're either new to property or you don't know as much as maybe some of the other people do the other side to that is it's and easily done by the way to think oh well I'll buy this property I'll refurb it add value and sell it and let's say properties in that area are selling for 150,000 pounds and you buy it for let's say 120,000 pounds for example and you spend 30,000 pounds on it by the time you do the work 30,000 ends up becoming 70,000 or 50,000 so it's costing you 170 grand you then want to make a markup on it and you want to sell it for 200,000 pounds but guess what if properties in that area are only selling for up to 150,000 pounds you're not gonna be able to sell it for 200,000 pounds so don't just jump on a property because you think it's cheap yes of course there is a concept of below market value finding motivated buyers who want to sell their property at a certain price for a certain reason if you've got that particular scenario absolutely fine if you haven't don't just go lowballing uh, on deals thinking you're going to find a good deal without knowing the full picture and understanding how it works because you can lose money very very quickly once bitten twice shy but unfortunately in property once bitten most people don't come back to live that journey again so be very very careful not to make this mistake number two and this is a common one buying property just for capital appreciation so thinking I'll buy a property today I know in my mind property cycle how the property cycle works in every you know, say 13 to 20 years property doubles so I'm 40 years old now for example so when I get to 60 uh, my property will be double the value and I'm gonna be quids in that's gonna be my big pension pot because I don't have a pension pot and everything's gonna work fine well guess what I've got bad news for you the first thing is when you get there in, in 20 years time you don't know what the uh, cycle of the property market is going to be the property may not have doubled in value there might be some other situation and scenario so I suggest to you do not buy property for capital appreciation buy property to create an income stream so every single month there's net profit coming into your bank account into your business for every single property that you own the capital appreciation side should be a mere bonus for you for staying in and with the property and the property market and the property industry for 15 20 years so always buy property based on rental income and yield and return and the capital appreciation is a bonus and not the other way around number three again this one's very easily done is you go and see a property and you fall in love with it and think it's fantastic and all of a sudden emotion takes over you're not being logical and you think oh, I really like this property it's fantastic let's buy it because I'd live in it well the first thing is you're not going to live in it you're buying it as a rental property so you have to be pragmatic have to be logical just because you've fallen in love with the property it doesn't mean it's worth what you may think it's worth and you may end up blurring your objectivity because you've fallen in love with the property absolutely buy property that you love that's fine no problem with that whatsoever buy nice properties 
but make sure you don't let your emotions take over I can talk for the next hour to you about deals that people have shared with me where they got overexcited fell in love with the property thought it was fantastic they bought it didn't quite figure out to be what they thought it was going to be and they lost money on it and then they've no, never gone back into property again so just because you fall in love with the property it doesn't mean you go crazy and offer a crazy price or buy a property that doesn't work what you ought to do is do the numbers make sure the numbers work and the property works for you in line with your goals and objectives if that box is ticked then have your other criteria consider buying the property if, if that box isn't ticked no matter how nice the property from a purely investor's point of view don't do the deal number four be very clear on your strategy so when you're buying properties are, are you into HMOs are you doing commercial conversions are you doing service accommodation are you looking to flip the properties are you looking at service accommodation and then go in to buy a property with that particular mindset because certain areas HMOs for example may work well certain areas commercial conversions work well certain areas student accommodation works well but if you're not clear on your strategy and you end up buying say student accommodation in an area where students don't want to live or it's not going to be attractive for them well guess what you ain't going to do too well so be very clear on your strategy if you're unsure about your strategy I will record a video for you to talk about the different types of strategies and how you can use them but for now be clear on your strategy and only ever buy properties that a fit your strategy and b fit the criteria number five is do the maths do the numbers a lot of people generally underestimate two things how long it's going to take them to do up a property and secondly how much it's going to cost them and then what happens is they either run out of money or if they've got the bank's money they've got to pay it back they're coming to big problems so always make sure you sense check your numbers with somebody who knows what they're talking about or speak to a quantity surveyor or a project manager or a mentor or somebody who's more experienced to sense check those numbers for you when you go out and get quotes make sure you get at least three quotes from contractors and have a contingency as well for when the project or if a project runs over but I can tell you having done projects myself having worked with hundreds of clients over the last 20 years projects overrun projects cost more than people think they are going to cost at the start so have that in your numbers so there's no nasty surprises because if you're not ready for those surprises and you get a curved ball it's going to be financially painful and again it might put you off doing property deals in the future so sit down be logical work through the numbers sense check them get somebody external to check them for you get at least three quotes so you're getting the best deal and make sure you then stick to the plan